Chelsea, you like my Earth Day outfit? Do I not look like the Earth? So it's Earth Day, but I discovered that even though I live on planet Earth, I don't know much about her. So today I want to introduce a segment called No Dumb Questions, where I get to ask all of the questions to an expert. And my expert today is anti-waste activist, Brett Chamberlain, welcome to my crib. You're just waiting outside awkwardly for this moment. What's up? Hey, Lily, happy Earth Day. What a coincidence, you're right yeah, here. Happy Earth Day, so come on in. How you doing? Do you like my outfit? Looks great. I look like the earth, right? Yeah, I wish I got the tie-dye in my mouth. I'm very nervous for you to be here because I was like, is this house sustainable? I'm not sure. You might see some stuff and judge us. Tell me exactly what you do. You're an anti-waste activist and educator. What exactly does that mean? I work with an organization called the Story of Stuff Project, and we are working to take on our consumer-crazed culture, create a future that's more sustainable, mm -hmm. healthy, and just. Okay, so this segment is called No Dumb Questions, and I'm being serious because I want to ask some genuine questions I have. No filter. You down? Sure. I grew up obviously watching movies about the dangers of plastic, you know, yeah. AKA Mean Girls. So Classic. I realized though, <laughs> I don't think I know what, this is a really dumb question. I don't think I know what plastic even is. What is a plastic? Most people don't. Most plastic is actually made from fracked natural gas or oil, fossil fuels. So the same companies that are behind your gas stations like Exxon Mobil. Shell, Dow DuPont, BP. As we've gotten better about using less oil and natural gas for things like transportation and energy, the fossil fuel companies see a lifeline in plastic. So despite the scale of this crisis, they're actually making more of it, not less. Typical. Typical. They can't sit with us. No, definitely not. Now, all that virgin plastic, plastic that's being produced for the first Wait, time. Did you call them plastic virgin? We call them nurdles. These are the little plastic pellets. Are you talking about me? <laughs> that's what they used to call me in high school when I was picking through the trash too, yeah. <laughs> What is a virgin nurdle? So it's just plastic before it's been manufactured into anything. Here, have some. Is this like raw plastic? Is this is raw thing? plastic. Do you just walk around with raw plastic? Oh yeah, that's an industry thing. Just like you walk around with the camera crew. <laughs> Touche. <Yeah. laughs> should, should I give this back? Uh, yeah, why don't I go okay. ahead and take this? I don't want to take your nurdles. Just precious nurdles. <laughs> I understand how plastic's made now, but I'm going to ask you like a, a very controversial question. Is okay. that cool? Because I want to be real with you. I have a lot of friends who don't believe in recycling, not because they're anti-environment or anything, but they tell me stories about how I recycle things and I see the person come collect it and they just put it all into the same truck or all into the same dumpsters, all goes to the same place. I guess the question is, is recycling real? <laughs> so when that happens, it's definitely the exception, not the rule. You really should be recycling, particularly materials like paper, glass and aluminum. They definitely have value. They will get recycled. Plastics, slightly different story. So your friends aren't totally wrong. There is such a flood of plastic leaving our homes and our businesses that our recyclers are simply overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So some of those plastics, like number one, PET, polyethylene, that's what your soda bottles are made from. Okay. Those are really recyclable. But there is a ton of other plastic, all those other numbers, uh, like your clamshell takeout containers that are considered low and no value. Nobody really wants them. Yeah. So there's a lot of nitty gritty to this. There's not a universal rule. So the rules are gonna vary from community to community. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons that it's really hard to have effective messaging about what's recyclable and what's not. It's just so hard to do good. Yeah, totally. Well, that's why I'm here for the dumb questions. Do you feel like a lesser famous Leonardo DiCaprio? You can talk to my mom. Okay, so here's a dumb question for you. Someone's really busy, one of my friends, super busy, mm -hmm. doesn't have a lot of time. One of your things. friends? One, one of my friends, yeah. for sure. Yeah, she's super hot. Doesn't have time for a lot of things, wants to do good for the environment. Uh -huh. What are some small things in her life, some small changes she can make that can have an impact? That is a great question. Um, certainly making responsible purchasing decisions is a great place to start. What Even are some better? Like, key ones you would give me, like key ones? Reusable well, water bottle? You okay. gotta have your reusable water bottle. It's 2021, come on. But remember, the most sustainable item is the one that you already own. So if you can shop used, repair things, and just make a decision not to buy things that you don't need. So I'm saving the world by being cheap and not buying things. Exactly. <laughs> Do you buy things you don't need? Oh, definitely. Yeah, nice job. Thank you. I also don't take many showers, because water. <laughs> Why would you? So I want to walk around, and I want you to tell me what is recyclable and what's not. Are you down? Cool, let's All do right, it. All right, let's do it. Let's go outside first. I feel like the, one of the most common things that people in their homes recycle are boxes. We yeah. have a lot of boxes on set. Uh -huh. so we get a lot of deliveries. Is this recyclable? The thing is, this plastic tape on it is going to have to come off at some point in the process. You don't rip it off like you're doing now. It's more likely to end up in the environment or being openly burnt. So you have to take the tape off the box. Take it off. It's kind of great stress relief though, right? Great stress relief. I'm gonna go through some stuff in the fridge and I want the real deal. Is it recyclable? Is it, is it not? Okay. Let's check it out. Toys? Not really recyclable. It's not recyclable. Yeah, there's just nothing to do with it. I have a lot of wigs. Comb it out, maybe a fresh dye job, all new wig. So I couldn't put my recycling bin though. I wouldn't do that. I have a really dumb question. 
up until this point, every time something was gonna be recycled, in my mind it goes through a machine where like it's compressed into a million pieces and built into something new, but that's not always the case. The thing is though that most plastics can't be recycled into the same product. So a plastic bottle generally doesn't become a new plastic bottle. Really? See, I just thought a plastic bottle was made up of like 50 other plastic bottles. Unfortunately not. Sports equipment. This is like rubbery, plastic you know? It's probably vinyl, which is a really- Yeah, vinyl, that's what I said. If it's got multiple types of plastic in it, mm -hmm. it's almost definitely not recyclable. Do you or do you not have to clean out something, food products, before you recycle them? Because some people I know are obsessive, others are like, stop, stop being crazy. Clean or otherwise, there's really not a huge recycling market for that. Better to design those products out of our system entirely by putting in place reusables. Okay, we're gonna dive into this. So it's not just about us recycling better, it's about products being made better. Exactly. We're on like the same page right now. Last one in my fridge, I use this very often, uh -huh. money gun. That's about as much money as this show has. Yeah, <laughs> nonprofit careers, folks. Yeah, again, there's probably a lot of different parts in there. There's batteries, stuff like that. It's just really usually not recyclable. Question about the batteries, do those melt into other batteries? No. Damn it. Now, very common mm -hmm. is packaging like this. So that is unfortunately not recyclable. Thin, soft plastics like that, almost never. But is this not, this small thing not a recycling sign? Oh, Lily, I'm about to blow your mind. That is actually a resin ID code, and it tells you what type of plastic it is. The plastic industry, shall we say, coincidentally put it inside the three chasing arrows. That gives a lot of people the impression that their materials are recyclable when they're really not. So it's a knockoff. It's a recycling sign knockoff. It's a recycling sign knockoff. It's a knacky shoe. It's an Adidas shoe. What's better to drink out of, a water bottle or a can? Definitely gonna wanna use a reusable water bottle. He's like, none of the above! Eh. Are shoes recyclable? You're probably better to donate them and give them a second life. Okay, okay. This PPE, right, don't, don't run away. This PPE, <laughs> on set we use a lot of PPE. The yeah. shield. Again, reusables, reusables, reusables. Another reason COVID is horrible, another reason. Can you recycle fabric? Generally not recyclable. So to confirm, me wearing the same clothes every day, I'm helping the environment. You're a hero. I'm gonna recycle this, this will definitely become a yo-yo. Probably not. Fake plants. Real plants, you could compost. Boss belt recyclable. Why would you ever give that away? You're right. That was yeah. a question and you passed. Man, I'm a huge buzzkill today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so what happens? I take something, I put it in the bin. From your curbside, it's going to get picked up by your local recycler. It's going to get brought to a facility called a MRF. A MRF? A MRF. A MRF? I'm telling you, we get all the best words. OK, what is a MRF? Place. So, uh, materials recovery facility oh, is where the they're acronym? gonna. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. My, my brain went to MILF, and I was like, is this like a really hot older recycling woman? It's like a really I, hot I recycling facility. That. I just like yeah. thought about a really hot, like cheater pattern uh -huh. dress recycling, and she's like, yeah, she's sorting out bottles, all your stuff. Like, yeah. Got it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Get your mind out of the gutter, my Honestly. God. Okay. So once it gets to the materials recovery facility, mm -hmm. it's basically gonna get it sorted, right? So all your glass, your aluminum, the paper, and all the plastics. Once it's all bailed and sorted, it basically gets sold onto an international commodities market as like a raw commodity. It gets sold? Yeah. What? Even worse, it gets shipped to other poor countries like Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines that have seen a flood of low and no value plastic coming from developed nations in the global north. For the production of the story of plastic or documentary, I traveled to Indonesia and the Philippines. I walked through fields of plastic that were identifiably American waste. There were packaging from products that I had in my own freezer and Amazon delivery envelopes with addresses in Montana. So our convenience lifestyle, our throwaway lifestyle that is built on the backs of the health of human communities and biosystems halfway around the world. Is it true there's a trash island? There's not a trash island per se that you could go and walk on. So that's not a first date? Not a first date idea. That refers to an ocean gyre where the currents are pulling trash into a higher concentration. Mm -hmm. But in the ocean, due to all that salt and wind, waves, and sun, plastic is gonna break down into smaller and smaller bits that we call microplastics. So I actually brought some here. You have microplastics? I have microplastics oh, collected these are like from what the LA Pacific people, Gyre. LA people call this crystals. Yeah, you or buy like dermoabrasive face rub. So you're saying a bunch of this is in the ocean? A ton of that is in the ocean. A ton of this. And unfortunately, that means it's also ending up inside marine mammals who are increasingly washing up dead with stomachs full of plastic. Because I was going to ask a really dumb question, which is like, isn't it good if plastic is breaking down into smaller pieces? The problem is that it's not breaking down organically into natural molecules that can be reused in the biosphere. It's just breaking down mechanically into smaller and smaller bits that are still plastic. So they basically turn into little nasty toxic sponges that end up being filled with all the other gunk that's in our oceans too. TikTok, this is for you. Plastic straws. It is said that they destroy the turtles. Is it going to really make a difference if me and my family recycle some straws? 
it's definitely gonna make a difference. It's kind of like brushing your teeth, right? Like it's a thing that adults should do. You know, you're gross if you don't. You don't really get a pat on your back for doing it. Brush your teeth, folks. <laughs> Companies would love for us to keep the focus on consumers. Try and make it our responsibility to make sustainable choices. The thing is, we don't live in a culture or an economy that's designed for sustainability. So it's really hard to live responsibly. That's why we need to make deep, systemic change to make sure that doing the right thing is the easy thing. So corporations have a big responsibility here. Absolutely. Corporations are the one producing all this plastic and profiting from it. There's even a bill in the US Congress right now called the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act of 2021. Mm -hmm. Bit of a mouthful. <laughs> it's got a lot of great solutions in it, including reducing our throwaway plastics, mm -hmm. holding companies accountable for the plastic waste that they produce, calling out false solutions like incineration, and putting a pause on new and expanded plastic production facilities. So now is a really great time, if you care about this issue, to call up your representatives, your senators, or even the White House, and ask them to pass the Break Free from Plastic Pollution Act of 2021. Okay, so I've learned a lot from you. You've told me a lot of scary things. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't terrified right now. Are we doomed? I mean, the, doom is a strong word. It is a strong word. By the time that a kid born today is our age, there's gonna be more plastic than fish in the ocean. So by the time a kid is 21, there's been more, there's more plastic than fish in the ocean. Yes, it's never too late to start making change. The faster that we start putting in place these deep structural changes, the less steep of a hill we have to climb to create a thriving future that we all want. Y'all better recycle. Brett, thank you so much. I feel like I just got schooled so hard, and I'm sure you did as well. Make sure you check out the YouTube short that Brett helped produce. It's called The Story of Plastic. It's on YouTube. Thank you so much for coming to teach us. Thanks for having me. Look, the birds are thrilled about this. They're part of it, too. They That's know we're right. on their side. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so now that we're done, like, real talk, how dumb were my questions? Uh, I mean, they were questions. Huh. Is there, like, a universal sign for recycling? Like, I'm a... I want to say this, but then I'm also like, yeah, is I think this the Illuminati? Illuminati's got that right. already, right? But like, so is there not a res should, I mean, we could take it should, back, should, right? Should, should we reclaim this? I think so. Should we recycle it? Whoa. Oh, oh snap! Whoa. You thought it was Jay-Z. Oh, now man. it's recycling. Ooh. You're welcome. Hey, thanks so much for watching this clip. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel for more just like it. If you don't, none of us can leave set. Thanks!